One thing that's very important when you're beginning to work with cows and examine them and work on them is to keep yourself from getting injured as well as keeping the cow from being injured. And there is a great deal that should be pointed out about the approach to the cow. First of all, you should always be careful that the cow knows you're approaching so that she doesn't become startled. Oftentimes, you could get positioned into an area where the cow can't see you, and if you just immediately touch the udder, the leg, the foot, it'll startle the cow. She may kick just as a primitive reflex, and you get injured. So you don't want to just be coming up here and touching a cow in an area like this. It, depending on the animal, she may uh, kick. So you should always let the cow know you're coming. Start in an area where you're less vulnerable. And do this mostly by feel. Just work your way back on the cow, very gently, quietly. Get back into the area where you want to examine. And even ordinarily sensitive parts can usually be examined without much difficulty, so long as you use the uh, right approach let the cow know you're coming. A second thing is to make sure that you always have part of your body interposed between the cow and some area that can hurt you, like her head or her foot, and your face or some other vital parts. Uh, you're less likely to get injured if you have part of your rear end, your leg, your, your arm, something like that, interposed in an area such as the udder. When you examine, you might want to use an approach like this, as opposed to being down here where your face is right here in the way that any time she makes a move, the first thing she hits is your face. So develop techniques that will allow you to approach, get down in here, and if this cow kicks, she's going to hit my leg, hit my rear end, and I'll be less likely to have an injury. It'd be very difficult for her to get to my face in this position. Same thing can be said about the head. When you examine this cow's head and you use an approach, uh, around her front end, you want to be sure to not be leaning over right directly in front of this cow with your head exposed. You approach like this with your arm out here, stiff armed, hand on the head, touch like this so that if she moves her head badly, she'll tend to throw you out of the way. Method for restraining a cow is a simple rope halter. It's made with two adjustment places, and they go between a nose band, which is a fixed structure. That's the portion from here to here. This never moves. It's a uh, length that is usually uh, given for the average cow. On the right, there's an adjustment that allows movement up and down on the right side, which adjusts the length of the portion that will go up over behind the ears and the pole. And then it goes to a draw, which goes under the jaw and exits on the left side of the halter, such as this. And then the lead is off at the end of that. The halter should be uh, adjusted so that you have an appropriate length that will go behind the ears, such as this, to begin with. Then you adjust the bottom portion, the draw, so that it will for sure get under her jaw, and uh, such as that. And you adjust it so that the twists are out of it, so it'll easily go on without any uh, undue hassle. There are several ways this halter can be put on, several wrong ways. Uh, there are several reasons why it's important to put it on in a proper way, like I'm holding it here. The first thing is the public relations in that any client who sees you put a halter on a cow properly will know automatically that you have some knowledge about cattle. If you put it on wrong, you're immediately suspect because if you can't get a halter on right, what else might you do wrong? The second thing is 
that a halter that's put on properly functions a lot better because it gets better leverage on the head. So the proper way the halter should go on is as I'm holding it here with a nose band across the front of the cow's face, one adjustment off to the right, the draw that goes under the jaw and an exit to the lead which comes off to the left. As it's put on the cow, the best technique uh, on an animal, particularly one that's a little bit fractious, is to stand on one side, reach on to the opposite side, drop the top portion over the right ear, or the ear the furthest from you, swing it around the front so that the, the uh, draw goes under the jaw, drop the left portion over the left ear, and you can almost throw this on a cow's head if this portion was allowed enough slack so it just falls down under her jaw. And then pull it down tight so that it comes over into this area, and you can see that the jaw is over there so it hits her about midway down her nose. If the adjustment is made such that this goes way up here by her eye, you have very little leverage on the cow because this is too far up on her head and you don't have very much of a fulcrum. You can't control her very well. If it's down too low, there's a chance that this could slip off the end of her nose and you lose the animal. such as that, if she pulls on it real hard. Or the other possibility is that you could get it down over her nares and she could choke. You get down into softer tissues at the end of her nose. And uh, so it's both dangerous from the standpoint of losing the cow and also shutting off her airway. The proper way is just comfortably positioned about halfway down on her nose and then it's held over to the side. Now I'm going to show you a couple of wrong ways to put it on by comparison. First of all, you could get it on backwards with the draw coming over to the right side. And sometimes we purposely put the halter on backwards just uh, in putting the cow on the table or if we want to tie her over to some object and make sure that uh, we we have the best leverage to work on the opposite side of her head. But that's not the conventional way to put it on. Another way that, uh, another common mistake is to get the draw coming down from the top of the pole or behind, from behind the ears, such as this, which is uh, very poor leverage and will tend to slip the halter further up the head where you have not very good uh, position on the cow. Furthermore, uh, any owner knows that that's faulty technique. So now I'll put the halter back on properly. Again, when you put the halter on, even a relatively tame cow, it's wise to be sure you have some portion of your body positioned between your face and her head. Put this halter on, make a little adjustment and then you tie it over to one side. Now I'm going to tie it on this side and demonstrate a halter tie, which would be coming up around like that. It's well to keep that part of the rope right there. Then you come under here and draw that down. And then if you want to be extra safe with that, you pull the uh, end of the lead through this little loop to kind of lock it into place. If you need to release this quickly, the cow goes down, she gets into trouble, uh, you're finished with a procedure, all you do is take that lock out, give this a jerk, and the whole thing comes undone. I'll demonstrate that one more time. You come up under, you go down across this portion of the rope, Push it up through there and out here. 
and pull it tight. This can be tied under some tension. You want to have this cow held over there tightly. You pull it across there, lock it into place here, making sure you don't get your fingers in between or you could get hurt. Pull down like that and tight and you got it. Now I'd like to demonstrate a temporary halter which can be made with a lariat. In the event that you're in a position where you don't have a halter available, everyone might have uh, use of a lariat. In fact, you might rope this cow to get her caught. And this is apparatus at the end of this particular type of lariat is called a quick release Honda. It's a mechanism that just breaks apart, but you can see that it will form a loop when it's all pushed back together. These are commonly used by veterinarians to uh, have a good way to uh, get lariat ropes off. They just go in there like that and you have a lariat. So you could take this Lariat, put it around the cow's head like this, fasten it there. Now, if you work on a cow strictly at the end of a choke lariat, conventional lariat, uh, you have very poor leverage on her head to begin with. Second of all, if the cow fights to any degree at all, there is uh, a good chance of choking her. So the better plan is loosen that up and turn this into a halter by getting it nice and comfortably loose. Take a loop underneath the lariat like this. Make a loop large enough to get over her nose and turn this into a makeshift temporary halter with a draw that again comes off to the side and you'll notice here that this portion of the lariat gets down over her jaw so there's no chance of causing choke. When you're ready to release that, you pull this down, you swing the brake loose, the quick release Honda, and you're finished.